Hey, everybody. Welcome back to RGR. The Chiefs are going back to the AFC Championship game after defeating the Cleveland Browns 22-17 to on Sunday. Now, I know that was a pretty, uh, let's just say, heartfelt night for Chad Henney. We have to give him a bunch of credit for that game. I think that he played really well outside of the interception, and this Chiefs defense stepped up exactly when you needed them to. They did everything they were asked of them. They kept Cleveland at you know, under 20 points which is really good, especially considering I thought the run game was going to do whatever they wanted. They came in in the first half, and they completely shut it down. Now, a lot of us after this game were feeling a little bit obviously disjointed considering Patrick Mahomes did sustain that injury. We won't know exactly what's going on with him until later in the week. So I'm preparing right now that he's going to play on Sunday. But let's go ahead and look back at some of the things that the Chiefs did on offense and defense to win this game against the Browns. Now. We're going to start with the run game because the Chiefs' offensive line was actually quite quite good in this game in terms of running the football. Uh, they used a lot of motion, vertical and horizontal motion, to really screw with the Browns' off and, uh, defensive line and their linebackers. And this is a really fun play because, one, you're going to see the motion here. But one thing that this, this run play does for the Chiefs' offensive line is it allows them – to do what they do well. They're not good at getting vertical movement. They don't get vertical movement at all, for the most part, outside of maybe Eric Fisher. Now, you're going to see him blocked down, Ryder blocked down, and Remmers blocked down. That allows them to get horizontal movement because then they're going to bring Allegretti on a pull and Andrew Wiley on a pull. When the Chiefs can get their offensive linemen moving and also blocking down to create gaps like this, that this is how they be, they're going to be more successful. They can create these gaps, these holes, these running lanes for the running backs, specifically Daryl Williams and Clyde Everett-Hilaire. They're going to get up in the open field quickly. In this specific play, because I, I like seeing the decisiveness from Daryl Williams in, in the open field right here. And the linebacker 56 commits a bit more to the outside to the C, C gap. And that's where he just cuts back and gets upfield. They do a, a good job finally moving the, the pocket a little bit here with their, their, their offensive line. And it allowed Daryl Williams to do what he does best, which is like one cut and get upfield. So I think that they used the pass to set up the run very well in this game. And I think they're going to do that against the Bills as well on Sunday. Now, this is just really fun to see from Nick Allegretti. He does get beat by a blitzing linebacker right here, but you're going to see him recover which is the most important thing I think you can, you can take from this play that allows Patrick Mahomes to get out for that, that run. But let's just look at him quickly here as we find out how right here. He gets his knee on the ground, which allows him to then regain some leverage, and he's going to throw the linebacker to his left, to, to Allegretti's right with his left arm. Just watch him just, just get him out of the way. That's very impressive from the young guy right there, especially after you're thrown off balance onto the ground, the ability and the, the wherewithal to get your left arm and just shove him up to the side and let Patrick Mahomes get upfield. It's, it's good play. It's smart. And it, it shows that he can react in situations that re require him to do that kind of thing. So it's fun to see that kind of strength play on the field. Now we're going to flip over a little bit to the, some of the defense. And I think that the run game in the first half that the Browns didn't have was the most shocking thing to me. And this specific play really kind of showed me and sold me on Anthony Hitchens in the, in the playoffs and how he's played most of this season. So you're going to see Hitchens right here as the middle linebacker. But one thing I want you guys to kind of look at is Mike Dana here as the left defensive end and Mike Pinnell as the left defensive tackle. This is where the Browns make their, their money. They, they usually get a lot of movement here. And then when the linebacker fills properly, they just crush them down. You're going to see them not move at all. They're going to really stand up this defense, this offensive line of the Browns and not get much push. Because right here, this running lane that forms, this is usually like a, either a home run hitting or it's going to be a big, big play. And the Chiefs, along with, Tyron Matthew, who does a good job on the, on the full pack here, do a really good sound job of filling the gap. Here's that, that hole that was forming right here. It's very big. This running lane is, is huge for a guy like Nick Chubb. Now, just watch Anthony Hitchens. Like I said, he's coming downhill. We're going to show him one more time here. 
kind of downhill. What he's going to do to Jack Conklin, the offensive lineman, the right tackle, he's just going to take him out and dispose of him on the, on the ground. And that allows everyone else to fill and get back there. It was huge on this play to get to, get to the running back, to Nick Chubb, and Hitchens specifically does a very good job of identifying where he's going and then getting out in front of it and making Jack Conklin completely gone on the play. He just does a great job of displacing him, shoving him down. Like that's what they needed in this game against the Browns. And they got it from a lot of different players on their defensive line, on the linebacking crew as well. Speaking of linebacking crew, as well as Taron Matthew, who was impeccable in this game, the games, the plays that he made in the run game were really, really, really sound. They were smart. And this is one of those plays exactly because you can see his intelligence, not only on the field, but the way he identifies the football and where it's going. As soon as he sees the pitch coming, he gets out and tries to find where he can get back to Nick Chubb. And I want to specifically shout out Ben Neiman, who doesn't get a lot of shout outs, as we all know. Number 56 right here reacts immediately to realizing that it's going to be a pitch. He's going to come down and take on Jarvis Landry in the blocking game. And what this does is it forces the pulling guard or the pulling tackle as well as the fullback to have to go a little more horizontal. When you're forced to go more horizontal, that opens up that gap that Taron Matthew was able to get into. If they could come upfield directly like that, then they're going to get on him and make this is going to be a big play. But it allows him to slip through that, that gap that created from uh, the, the widening of them going horizontally, and it allowed Matthew to make a big play in the run game. It was really kind of a huge little thing that people don't, don't really see that made, that made Matthew's play so, so big. Now, and we're going to get a little bit more in-depth here because I think watching the Chiefs' offense in this game was really two-dimensional when Patrick Mahomes was in there. They used the pass to set up the run, but they also attacked both of the coverages that they saw in, in zone and man coverage specifically. This is a really good uh, showing of them attacking zone. Now, when they have, obviously, when they have Tyree Kill motion from left to right here, nobody goes with him, so they're just identifying zone what you have are really deep curls at second and 23 so you've got robinson kind of doing this but they're gonna have hardman take diagonally down the middle of the field and what that's gonna do take both safeties with him hill is gonna do the same thing with as everyone else is to be a hitch route again here another hitch route and then you're gonna have williams leak out of the backfield when, the, when Williams leaks out of the backfield, that's going to draw one of the linebackers in zone a little bit more to his left. And if we watch Tyree Kill as he's going out for this play, he's going to stop right here as soon as he clears that linebacker because, one, you're in his blind spot and you can't see right behind you to your right. You can't see where Tyree Kill is. And he's going to find – right here he's going to locate. He, he just looked out to his left. Let's see if I can slow it down just a little bit. So we're going to run through this play just one more time so you can see what Tyree Kill does. He, he looks to his right very quickly to identify where anybody is. So he's got a, a nice little gap here to sit in. And that, that widening from the linebacker is what does it all for him. And Patrick Mahomes is always going to see those gaps unfold. With, with Williams leaking out of the backfield and then blitzing actually a little bit, doing a good job up front. Not blitzing, but excuse my my misstep there doing a good job of walling everybody off for Mahomes to get this ball out on second and 23 because it's a big play that they need and they always seem to be able to find it like I said this just this little widening from the linebacker allows Hill to move to his right and create a much bigger gap and throwing lane for Patrick Mahomes who ends up getting hit on this play so that's how they were able to attack the zones of the Browns because one they're defense is, is not very good. It's not easy to, to line up against Tyree Kill, pa uh, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, McCole Hardman, and everybody else, especially with Darrell Williams playing the way that he played. So they did a good job attacking everybody all around when they were in man or whether, whether they were in zone. And if you guys want to see more about a specific man play where they attacked the deep safety with Tyree Kill and Byron Pringle, you can read that in my arrowheadguys.com article that dropped today about the entire offense in and of itself this is however is the big play to McColl Hardman and one <laughs> I know that Brian Baldinger broke this down I didn't actually watch that myself but if you did 
that's that's even better that's fine different eyes see different things but specifically what i want to show you here that the chiefs were able to manipulate with both one you have you had terry kill in the backfield and you had another speedster and Cole Hardman going back and forth across the offensive line. Now what that does is it creates a giant wall of, you can see defenders gapped up here, gapped up here, and, and no one really knows where the football is because you, you can see that you have one guy who absolutely knows where it is. You have another guy here who can see it as well, but you've got eyes here. You've got eyes here. You've got eyes here, eyes here. Maybe another guy that probably is trying to get to McCall Hardman, but no one else, is looking at the football. That's what this misdirection has created. The Chiefs, with Tyree Kill in the backfield specifically, really attacked the edges of the Browns' defense. They were able to do that multiple times in this game because of the speed that they have, and they know that the Browns don't have that. And when you can create misdirection and also fooling the eyes with where the football is, and you want attention on Tyree Hill. That's how they were able to create this giant play in the run game. Granted, Miles Garrett is, when in full health, he is an absolute beast. And he's got speed as well. You can see he's able to chase down McCole Hardman because he was running with him even before he, he slowed down. So this offensive play really kind of showed you how the Chiefs wanted to attack early in the game and allowed them to set up big plays because they used a lot of motion. They used a lot of displacement with the eyes as well it was really really fun to watch this offense and Patrick Mahomes is in there even more so when Chad Henney was running down the field on that third and 14 I tell you what guys that was just that was insane and I I will always remember that specific play from his career it's probably the biggest thing he's ever done in his life so in his career I should say probably not life now we're gonna get over to the defensive side and up until the very last possession on defense yeah they had their struggles but they were still in this game defensively. 17 points on the board for the Browns is what you really want in this game. They had just converted a fourth and two, so now the defense knows they have to get this stop. They cannot allow them to go down and score a touchdown. So we're going to see, obviously, the Browns still try to run the football because that's who they are. There's five or so minutes left on the clock, and they want to run the football. That actually shows me how much time was left. Yeah, 517. That's what I thought. 517, so you want to run the clock out a little bit, go down and take a lead. Chiefs know that they're going to run the football. They do. You have to have your best players show up in moments like this. Chris Jones is an absolute animal. He took one of the best, if not the best, offensive lines in the NFL, and he continuously got in the backfield off of multiple things. Now, the Browns are going to do everything they can to try to make it so Chris Jones and Derek Nani can't get back there. So they're going to chop right here, and they're going to have 77 and 64 kind of fall over themselves. You see that Nani here is actually going to take a step back. Jones, the athlete that he is, just jumps over everybody. And Frank Clark, who I've had my issues with in this game against second string and third string tackles, is going to do exactly what you want him to do. This ball is coming here, so he's going to be able to climb underneath this block attempt and get in the backfield. Uh, K-Pass is going to kind of block up the tight end here. Oh, excuse me. The 78 is coming across. 77 is, is actually going to pull. We all know that because we've seen the, him, the clip with him and Matthew kind of talking to each other after this, this specific play. It gets cleared out. And one thing that I really like to see was the last second decisiveness of Frank Clark to come back inside. That's what he needs to do a little bit more of. I, I've seen way too many times he goes upfield on the right side of that tackle and just completely takes himself out of the play. But like I said, here's Chris Jones doing what he does, coming, stepping over that block, and he nearly gets he nearly gets to him, dude. He gets an arm on him. He almost brings him down. But Anthony Hitchens, again, a good job of recognizing where the ball is going. He comes with the pulling guard, and then he realizes, one, that Matthew has now been taken completely out of the play. <laughs> a K pass and Frank, uh, Chris Jones, excuse me, are on Nick Chubb. So he's now got an opportunity to come underneath the other pulling guard and to make this tackle for a loss of one. It's a really good job, again, by Hitchens recognizing and stopping and starting and getting back in there again with Derek Nottie also seeing him because he took that step back, didn't want to get cut blocked. Like the things that they did in this final 
this final possession on defense were really eye-opening for a lot of players like Anthony Hitchens, who to this point really hadn't done much. And this, this step forward in this defense in the second year under it has been astronomical. And I really couldn't have asked for a better job of him this season after what we saw the last two. So I, I give a ton of credit to Anthony Hitchens. Uh, this blitz was always coming. <laughs> they did. They wanted to get back there with Baker Mayfield quickly to make him make decisions. That's what one thing that, that Baker doesn't do exactly well is make quick decisions when, when he's under pressure. And then did a, a good job of blitzing here, not knowing that it was a screen initially. But Frank Clark, who, as I mentioned, I have my issues with from this game, but you're going to see him do – one thing that really it's smart he sees that they're going to throw the football and a lot of times he was in coverage in this game when running backs came out of the backfield uh, so nick chubb's going to go out on a screen which they seem to only do with nick chubb in this game for some reason so it was smart of him to disengage and find where he was going to go but he knew that the blitz was on too so the ball had to get up quick and obviously you can see He's looking at Baker Mayfield where he's going to go with the football since his eyes have also come down as well. That's a key for Frank Clark to now go with the football, find the running back, get on him for the screen and, and just don't let him go. You have Wilson, you've got Sorensen free to the quarterback. So now the ball has got to come out. They did a great job, not only identifying within the play itself, which happens in a matter of seconds, but going through the reads, the progressions and finding where Baker was going with the football there. It's a great job by Frank Clark being smart and knowing where it's going. And I really liked to see that in the final drive because you need to have him in this, in this drive to win the game. And they knew it. And that, that was something that I hope he takes to heart and really starts playing with a little bit more, maybe so much the, the mental side, not necessarily always being the more physical, but seeing with his eyes and understanding. It's really, really fun to watch. Now, third and 11, Steve Spagnuolo's up. So, you figure he's going to blitz, right? He's got to blitz because they got to get to Baker Mayfield. No, they're going to go ahead and drop everybody in coverage and send four. And you have to win with four and get to Baker Mayfield quickly. That was really the turning point for me in seeing this unfold because when you can get pressure with four on, on any quarterback and you can drop into coverage, you make life difficult for them. Chris Jones is an absolute monster. We mentioned it. And he's going to beat probably the best guard in the NFL and Wyatt Teller here just he's just going to beat him to the outside he is something else I'll tell you what and I can't I can't say enough at what they did in, on this specific play to force Baker Mayfield to make an inaccurate throw because Chris Jones again like I said he's going to get pressure quickly and I want to just show you something right here so we've got Austin Hooper as the inline tight end right here. That's where Baker Mayfield's looking because you don't you can see that there's no defender around him. Obviously, we're going to have a bit of a a Taron Matthew sighting for this this specific play. But you have man coverage, and Baker's looking to his left immediately. So you have you have to know that this ball's coming here quickly if you're Austin Hooper. Granted, you have to get to, to here for a first down. So they assume with four coming, they're going to be able to get the ball out, maybe stay in the pocket a little bit. Hooper's not looking for the football. Baker now realizes that he's got nowhere to go immediately. So he's going to take that ball and look to his right. And that's when Chris Jones is in his face and he has to get the ball out to Kareem Hunt now. And that forces the inaccurate throw, makes him take a little bit more time to corral it and allows everyone to get there for a two-yard gain on third and 11. That's huge. If you get another two, three, three yards, you probably end up going for it, I, I would think, in that situation. But that's execution to the highest level on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays that they needed to win this game. And I absolutely loved watching it. <clears throat> it was a great job on all fronts from the defense right there. So I can't wait to watch this game against the Bills. I think it is going to be an incredible incredible matchup especially when Patrick Mahomes gets on that field in another AFC championship game you guys go ahead and comment leave every um things you want to see for this coming up game Ryan and I will take a look at it in the the, get the game preview on Friday so I hope you guys enjoyed this it's a lot of fun for me to break down both sides of the game so I hope you guys continue to enjoy what we do here at RGR 
it's really for you guys. And I really can't thank you guys enough. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.